So now we're going to get into the idea of user input in our games. Now we've seen this in standard Java where we can just use our input.nextLine and whatnot, and that can get us easy input. But in video games it doesn't work like that because the user doesn't have really any place to type. It, we can't deal with any type of information like that. Uh, so we need to come up with other ways, alternate ways, and we kind of have to do things from a bare bones process. Basically what that means is if we care about a key, we have to detect whether the user has clicked it. Not all games care about all keys. So for example, you might be creating a game like Tetris. Really the only keys you need are the keys to rotate, the keys to drop, and maybe the key to save a piece or something like that. You don't really need any other keys. Four or five keys and you're good. If you're playing like a first person shooter, you need a lot more keys. You need your WASD keys, you need your keys to throw your grenades, to jump, um, change your weapons, go to a quick quick weapon change, all these different things. You have a lot of options in terms of uh, keys. It all depends on the game you're working in or the software you're working in and depending on what state of the game you're in. So for example, maybe you're in the high score state of the game and you're trying to enter your name. Well, if you hit the W key in that state, you want it to show the letter W. However, if you're in the middle of a game, that might mean move forward. So what particular part you're in the game at any given point really dictates what a key is going to do. So you need to be t detecting the keys at specific times within your game. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the basics of picking up the individual keys for two purposes. A, text entry, and B, usage in our actual game itself. Text entry is the most straightforward because usually you're trying to get information from the user. Maybe um, you're asking them to enter their name or something along those lines. So in order to do that, what I've done is over here I've created a string variable called text. This variable is going to represent all the text the user types. And what I'll do is I'll display that on the screen. So instead of displaying hello world like we were before, I'll just display the text variable. And you'll see that if I run my program, or we still have our scrolling screen program that's looking pretty choppy, I'll slow that down. Um, Again, don't forget that anything with animation, uh, the capture software we're using runs at 10 frames per second, even though the game is running at 60, so it doesn't look like it's moving at a proper rate. Uh, but in any case, um, once we start typing, we're going to start to see the message appear on the screen here. So let me just quickly lower the frame rate of, or not the frame rate, the scroll speed. Um, I'm just going to set it to zero so it doesn't actually scroll at all, um, just so it stays still. The mushroom will still move, but that's okay. All right. So basically we need to detect each key. Let's start with one key at a time. The code to detect a key, whether it's currently pressed or not, is just a very simple if statement. If is key released, sorry, if input dot is key released, that means did they just release a specific key. Now here inside the brackets we're gonna write key event dot vk underscore and then whatever key we're looking for. So let's just kind of go across the uh, keyboard and do QWERTY. So Q. Let's see if the user types a Q. If the user types the Q, then I want to add the Q to the current value of my text variable. Text is equal to text plus Q. Basically we're concatenating. And we're doing a manual concatenation. Think like you were typing in a text box in like Chrome or something like that as you type the letter always goes to the end of the current thing you're typing in. Oh, that should be... Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, it should be a capital I. Silly me. Is key released. There we go. So if we run our program now and we hit F11. Now I gotta click on the screen so it'll start to take my input. As soon as I hit Q, we start to see the Q show up. For every key I press, it's going to show up on the screen. Easy enough. Now, none of the other keys do anything yet because I'm not detecting them. So for every single key, I need a separate if statement. So if I was going to do all 26 letters, then I would need 26 if statements. So let's just do um, let's just do Q W E Q W. We're going to add in a W instead of a Q, and E, we're going to add on the E. Hit F11, and over here, all we have to do, Q, 
W, E, and we can get any combination of those as we type. And it's just continually outputting that on the screen, just because I told it to. The draw.txt down here. Now we can detect any key we want for this. We could even detect other keys like backspace, for example. Let's say I'm trying to do text entry and I want to detect whether the user hit the backspace key, which means I want to take off the last letter. So here, we can say input dot is key released vk underscore back space. Now if they click the backspace, I want to take the last character off of my text variable. In order to do that, I need a new command called substring dot substring. And basically what substring does is it says, give me a piece of the word, a sub part of the word. And to do that, I need two parameters, which index I want to start at and which index I want to end at. Now the index is basically the letters themselves. So for example, if I had the word Bob, the, cap the first letter B would be index zero, the first letter. The second O, or sorry, the O would be index one, and then the final B would be index two. They're just addresses, numbered addresses for each letter. So if I want to start at the beginning of my word, because I do, I want all the letters starting at the first letter, and then I have to specify what letter I want to end at but not include. The problem is, I have no idea how long my word is. I can't just put down like a three, for example, and get characters zero, one, and two. That's not going to work. I can detect how long the string is, though. I can say text.length, and that will actually give me the full length of my string. But I don't want the full length, I want the length minus one, because I'm trying to take off the last letter. And then I'm going to take that value and I'm going to assign it back into the text property. So basically I'm saying, give me a piece of text. Which piece? Start at the beginning and go to the last letter minus one. And then, then restore it back into text. So now when we run our program, hit F11, I should still be able to type, QWE, oops, gotta click on here. QWE, QWE. Now I'm gonna hit the backspace key. E goes away, Q goes away, W goes away, but I can still keep typing. Back, 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 back. He'll keep typing. Back, 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 back. So that's how we can handle the backspace. We can cut off a single letter one at a time. So this is text entry for our input. Next one, we're gonna actually start to control things.